Hello and welcome everybody, this is Yami and in today's video we're going to show you the best AMD settings for zero latency and also a very good FPS boost. Now these settings will be safe at the same time the results will shock you guys. As always we're going to get straight to the point. Alright so first what we need to do is install the AMD graphics slash drivers. I will leave this link down in the description. It's really simple. Basically click on download Windows drivers, wait and go with the installation. I've already have the latest ones, so I won't need to install it again. But if you do not have AMD drivers, this will install it back again. Now let's get into the settings itself. Right click on your Windows desktop, click on AMD software. And in here, you guys might not see a lot of apps or you guys might also see a lot of different games you have on your PC. So what we need to do is go to gaming right here, go to graphics, and I will show you guys the best possible settings you guys can do. Performance setting over here doesn't really do much. To be honest, it's not as good as you guys might think. So what we'll need to do is click on custom, then follow along for the best possible settings. For the Radeon super resolution, make sure you guys have this disabled because instead we will use AMD fluid motion frames 2.1. So this will boost the FPS using frame generation. So if you guys are playing any type of survival games or story based games, this is perfect because it will give you guys very high guest boost since it will generate frames for you guys to improve FPS. Then when it comes to search mode, make sure you guys have this on auto. Next, the performance mode, make sure you guys have this on performance. Quality basically will not give you guys as much frames as performance. So always make sure you guys have performance option. Next is the Radeon Anti-Lag. This is one of the best settings for reducing input lag. This will basically reduce your input lag. Meaning if you click on a key, it will register a lot quicker than having this off. Which is a option I always use in any type of optimization for AMD and also NVIDIA. Next, we have the Radeon Boost. This is also again another great option to impact FPS in general. And for the performance mode for that option, make sure you guys again have performance. This will give you guys a lot more FPS than quality option. Since quality will prioritize quality more than FPS. So if you guys don't play like FPS games, I would recommend go with quality because it will make the image look better. But performance will give you guys more FPS. Radeon Chill is one of the worst options to have for PC players. Basically, it will limit the FPS to reduce power. So if you guys use a laptop, this could help. However, I would really not recommend this. If you are on a laptop, I would recommend you always play while the laptop is charging for best possible performance. Having this will give you guys so much less FPS. So make sure you do not have this enabled. Next option is the Radeon image sharpening. Uh, basically, this will sharpen the game slash images itself. This is also another great option to have. Make sure you guys have it on enabled and for the sh uh, sharpness percentage, make sure you guys have this on 12, uh, 20. This will help a lot with making the game look better. Now, th now this setting right here could depend on disabling and enabling it. This will reduce both visual tearing and lag. However, in a lot of FPS games, this could cause some issues, for example, ghosting. So if you guys see that you are facing a lot of ghosting, turn it off and see if there's any type of difference. If not, just leave it uh, enabled. It will help a lot with frame rate, target control. I personally have this on disabled. However, in a lot of cases, I would actually recommend you guys turn this on. If your monitor is, for example, 144 hertz and you're getting around 250, but are still facing a lot of issue with drop FPS, meaning you go from like 250 to like 200, that will cause you guys to lag a lot. The game will be cutting up everything like that. So in that case, I would recommend you guys actually to turn this on and limit it to whatever hertz you guys have your monitor on. For example, I have a 144 hertz, so I just put it on 144. Now, yes, it will limit the FPS on 144, but it will make it so much more playable. It will reduce a lot of that drop FPS. So if you are having a lot of drop FPS issues, make sure you enable this and leave it at 144 or whatever hertz you guys monitor are. 360, 240, 
10. Even at 60, you guys could limit it at 60, which will help you guys a lot and will make the game so much smoother than it is. Anti-aliasing, this is also another great option. Use application settings, basically will decide on the game you're playing itself. It won't really do anything too much. Anti-aliasing method, now for this, make sure you guys do multi-sampling. This is the best possible settings between all of them. And for this option right here, make sure you guys have it undisabled. Also, same thing goes with this option right here. This will cause a lot of lag, so I would not recommend it. Texture filtering quality. Now, this is probably the most important setting over here. Make sure you guys select performance. This will give you guys the most amount of FPS between all the other options. So make sure you guys have that enabled and on, on performance. And surface format optimization. Make sure this is on enabled. Again, it will help a lot with FPS again. For collision mode, make sure you guys do override application settings. It's the best setting between all of them. And for the level, make sure you guys have it on 2x. From my testing, this was the best possible settings as the time I've recorded in this video. It might be different for you guys, but the sweet spot for me is really 2x, so go with that. OpenGL triple buffering, make sure this is enabled. And 10-bit pixel format, make sure this is disabled, as you guys will probably not even need it. Now, going to the next option, we have tuning. I personally would not recommend anyone to touch anything when it comes to overclocking CPU or clicking on auto overclock. For best possible performance, it will really depend. You guys would have to go check yourself depending on your GPU. But I would recommend you guys do overclock GPU over here. This will optimize the GPU and overclock it. And that's really the only thing I would recommend you guys to do. Personally, there is a lot of issues when it comes to overclocking anything really when it comes to PCs, especially if your card is unreliable. It could just die at any seconds and you guys would do not want to do that. So that was all for today's video. Let me know if you guys need any other tutorials. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And join the Discord server down in the description. That was all for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.